so in this video I'm going to show how to reduce the dimension of the given data using principal component analysis so let me write here to so reduce the dimensions of the data or dimension of the data using principal component analysis we are going to use MATLAB to do this. We already know the mathematics and how the principal component works. So this is something I covered in my previous video. So what type of data that we are going to deal with, I'm going to show now. So here I have some Excel sheet with a lot of information here. I will tell what's that. So let's go here. So what we have here is so we, we collected some crystals from the crystallizer that contains uh, three different type of crystals. So different type in the means they differ from each other in terms of morphology. So you have one type of crystal that looks like spherical particles. So this is some microscopic image. You see here, if you look, they have almost a similar length and width and uh, we classify them as spherical particles. And then another type of data that we have is the same crystal population also contains some samples that look something similar to this one which looks like a needle shape crystal you have a long it has a longer length so length is relatively higher uh, or larger than the than its width width of the each crystals so we have something like a needle shaped crystals and uh, in the same crystallization batch we also have some crystal that looks something like this so what are they? So they are like a lot of needle crystals. They are agglomerated. So we, I classified them into something called agglomerated needles or we can just simply call as agglomerated crystals. So one thing is clear. You have a crystallization. You did some crystallization experiment in batch mode and suddenly you end up with a crystal population that contains three different type of crystals and these crystals, they differ from each other in terms of morphology so this is some information that we already know that's because uh, we have access to the microscopic image but if you just imagine you don't have access to this microscopic image and you want to know the different type of crystals that you may have in a in the crystal population yeah, so so the message is you have three type of categories in the population and then how do you quantify them? So what we do in the normally in the lab is we have we put it under a microscope, we take the image of these crystals and then we collect some morphological parameters, something like area. Area is the whole area of this crystal in pixels. And then you can also convert them into micron square. And we also have aspect ratio, something like length by width. And then we also have some information like a equal and circular diameter. I'm not going to explain what's what in this video. But all you need to know is you have some morphological parameters that, that defines each of these crystal images that we record under microscope. You have one more parameter, something called circularity. Another one is called convexity. Convexity will become useful, especially when you have an agglomerated crystal. And then you have another elongation is something similar to aspect ratio. So this will be like one minus aspect ratio that should give elongation. And we don't, there are a few more parameters like fiber elongation, fiber width, circularity, and then the regular parameter, which you might already know something called the length, the length of the crystal, major axis is another important parameter, major maximum distance is another morphological parameter parameter and then maximum distance perimeter solidity and width so we have a lot of uh, information that we can obtain from microscope so this type of information we we obtained uh, in the lab using equipment called morphology g3 so morphology g3 is, it comes like a it, it has something like a robotic arm you spread the crystal and then it will automatically record up to 30,000 to 40,000 crystals in less than 30 minutes. 
so at the end of the day what you have you have a lot of crystals images and and its morphological parameters the one which i listed here area aspect ratio circular diameter and so on yeah. and then what you have here is a bunch of data which that looks something like this you have a lot of numbers that you can see on the screen you have so these are just a sample id that's the magnification i used five time it's magnified to its actual length of the crystal so five time magnify x magnification and then the parameters which i was discussing like you can circular diameter length feet maximum distance perimeter major axis so usually you end up with your huge data so if you look at here i have almost 700 crystals that belongs to spherical crystals with spherical shape and then if you go to the next worksheet you have i collected up to 5000 crystals in the same crystal population and then i quantify i append the morphological parameters like diameter length width and so on and then again you also have other type of crystal in the same population so this one we already classified as agglomerated crystals and again you have some morphological parameters that characterize the, sh the overall morphology of the crystals that exist in the crystal population so this one i even have more i have roughly twenty thousand crystals images and then the corresponding morphological parameters so definitely it's a huge data and whenever you have a huge data pca will become re handy and it can identify some of the hidden information that exists in the data that you cannot see with your naked eye so if you just look at the screen here you have a lot of uh, numbers like uh, 64 120.66 99.83 if i move along the screen you have really huge number of a data set so so if you look at the data it's clear that it, it won't make any sense and we cannot pick any solid trend from this type of uh, data so that's why we are going to use pca and then let's see what pca will bring out of this data so pca to put it in a simplest form it's like a data visualization technique you give you supply the the pc algorithm with all the data that you have typically it's a big data with multiple variables and then you ask that pc algorithm to transform the data which you see here in the screen and then it will transform this data in reduced dimension in in something called maybe i will call it like a pcs space pcs space so principal component algorithm space of so so what what i mean uh, by reduced dimension is like so if you look at this screen you have euclidean circular diameter length width maximum distance perimeter major axis so these are variables very variables from the each sample so you have says take one crystal and then you measure all these variables 64.5 120.66 length width maximum distance perimeter so all these variables are just a measurable quantities that you can go to a lab and get some you can measure something and get something in the in the form of numbers that looks like something that you see in the screen now yeah. so these are multivariate data and then for demonstration purpose i did something for this video so what i did is i took some of the variables here so i created a new worksheet you can circular diameter you have length width you have maximum distance here i will bold this one you have area and then you have uh, se area i forgot what's this and then area in pixels you have circularity, HS circularity, convexity, solidity, aspect ratio, elongation factor. And then finally, I just put something called crystal category. So crystal category. And then I picked approximately 50 crystals under each category. So let's, if you drag down here, so if we can create one more, just call sample number in the screen 
just watch what I'm typing on the screen so this is a sample number let's put one two three so if you check the total sample we have 150 and if I move to the right side if you see the column Q I'll put a green color highlight so you have roughly roughly 50 crystals that belongs to category 1 spherulites so 1 means they are spherical crystals and then 2 you have approximately from 52 to 52 to 101 so these are category 2 so these are needle shaped crystals and the remaining 50 crystals that belongs to agglomerated needles so let's type that here spherulites so you have roughly 50 crystals that belongs that looks very that looks like spherical particles and other 50 that belongs to needle shaped crystals so we have a lot of information now so this is some obviously it's a multivariate data you have a lot of variables and we have also some information that there exist three categories but to be honest if you want to apply PCA algorithm the number of categories that exist in the data this is something that you don't have to know you yeah. so this is an additional information that we provide or that I'm saying now just for convenience purpose but actually if you want to use PC algorithm how many number of categories that may exist in the data this is obviously you you don't need this information to apply a PC algorithm because this is the exactly the information that we are going to extract using PC algorithm even if we don't know that you have a crystal population with three type of crystals still PCA will help you to identify that you have three type of crystals in the given data set so that's how PCA works that's something you will realize at the end of this video yeah. so what I'm going to do is I quickly summarize what we have here so you have 150 samples and then you have one two three four five six seven area eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen you have fifteen variables maybe i can type so one two three okay you have fifteen variables and then you have let's call this output output just is just some number that's that provides some information about the type of crystals that we have in the crystal population yeah. so what you are going to do and sample number in terms of sample number we have 150 so 15 variables and 150 so what does that mean so that makes the let me open the powerpoint So what we have here so let me type it so you have 15 measurables we have 16 measurables so that makes the 15 columns in the given data set and then you have 150 samples that makes the 150 the row 150 rows so what is the dimension of this data set so whenever I say dimension of the data set dimension of data it typically refers to rows multiplied by column so which means the dimension of the data that we are dealing with is 150 50 rows multiplied by 15 columns so that's the actual dimension of the data that we have now so what we are going to do is we're going to apply pca principal component analysis pca algorithm and reduce the dimension so when you apply pca you will get uh, exactly the same number of dimensions 150 multiplied by 15 so which means 
you can get 15 principal components out of this data so number of measurables so let me type this one so if you have 15 measurable quantities or 15 variables you can get up to 15 principal components so so that's the rule so that's how the mathematics of PCA work that's something you will realize at the end of this video and if you want you can also watch the math um, the another video where I explain the mathematics of the PCA yep. so 15 variables you will get 15 principal components but I said PCA the main objective of the PCA is to reduce the dimension and even the data with reduced dimension will contain all the information roughly 95 percentage of the information in the total data set so the reduced dimension it may be 15 multiplied by 3 or 15 multiplied by 2 so what it mean oh sorry 150 multiplied by 3 and then or 150 multiplied by 2 so you you have only three columns or maybe two columns these columns you can call it as uh, two principal components or three principal components and that should be enough to represent 95 percentage of the data in the big data set which is 150 multiplied by 15 so this reduced dimension so I'll write it here so this reduced dimension contain approximately 95 percentage of the variance in the in the actual data set so in the the actual data set of dimension 150 multiplied by 15 so here we have a smaller slightly the data set with smaller dimension like 150 multiplied by 15 even if you have more number of columns or uh, more number of samples say 30,000 40,000 the rule is simple and you are going to apply the algorithm in the same order yeah. and then what I mean is if you have 1500 multiplied by 15 still the reduced dimensions that will be approximately maybe 150 multiplied by 3 or 150 multiplied by 2 this is something reduced dimension this may represent 95 percentage of the variance in the actual data set but this is something that we can calculate or ident mathematically calculate how many number of uh, components whether do we need two component or whether we need three component to represent the 95 percentage of the data in the actual data set yeah. sometimes surprisingly even one component may be enough to represent 95 percentage of the variance in the actual data set but this is, it's our job to to identify how many components that we need to represent the 95 percentage of the variance in the data and that's something that we can calculate or uh, something that we can identify using something called eigenvalue eigenvalue of the of the covariance matrix so, so i will show you how to get all these buzzwords in a moment using matlab so MATLAB can do this in less than one minute, maybe in a fraction of a second, depending on the size of the data. So what we need to do, so we have the actual data set here. So let's call it data set. Okay. And then let's open MATLAB, hope it works. Mm -hmm. let's do one by one okay to make the window slightly make I don't know how to do it mm hmm Okay, hope you could see the screen. So let's do this. So I'm going to put some command PCA. So 
for dimensionality reduction of a big data set so the goal is to get the the principal components the first job is to pull the data from from the actual data set so I saved the file in the name called crystal data underscore YouTube underscore demo so let's pull the date and then um, it's in the sheet 150 also we have to pull the data to the MATLAB window so that's simple you can there are some codes to actually read the Excel sheet but I'm going to use the easiest way so let's open from the file where we have some where we saved from the folder where we saved this file um, hmm. not sure where I saved maybe I will save it let me save it in the desktop mm -hmm. and then let's go back to MATLAB window so let's open it You have to select all files if you by default it will you will have here only MATLAB files you have to change it to all files so that should allow you to view all the files that we have in the desktop so let's have okay you can close that crystal data so once you press open it will okay it's taking some time because it's a large data set which I know already okay once it's open you get all the sheets here in the screen which you can see now and then go to the the sheet where we cre created the data set for this exercise so 150 all and all you need to do is load load the variables so let's load the variables it starts from Euclidean circular diameter follow the the arrow in the screen Euclidean circular diameter to elongation and then we can also load the output so let's load all the data that we need so I'm loading all the data and then in the output type just load it as a numeric matrix and then press ok import selection press the green tick here Yo, that should have uh, it says the following variables were imported under with this name crystal data YouTube demo s5 something like that so let's close this one so if you go to your MATLAB window you will see the the data here under workspace and it, it will also show the dimension of the data 150 multiplied by 16 so that's how you define the the dimension of your big data so whenever you're dealing with a big data we always use the uh, we always define the dimension of the data so in this case 150 multiplied by 16 so that means you have 150 rows and you have 16 columns or roughly 150 samples and then you have 16 variables so you can use PCF for a lot of things uh, another commonly used application in uh, or at least which, which is relevant to crystallization is sometimes we measure a lot of spectra with a different time interval you can load all that spectra collected at different time intervals starting from 0th minute to maybe 48 hours and so on so you will have really like 2000 spectra collected over 48 hours and that time you may have even a larger data set you know so that time your column numbers will be more than the number of rows and still the rule is same you can apply PCA and then we can get some information about something that change in the reactor probably concentration liquid concentration or solid concentration maybe I can create another video using using the, the actual spectra maybe Raman spectra or IS spectra collected during a crystallization process but for the moment we will try to use this small data 150 multiplied by 16 and then we apply PCA and then we try to reduce the dimension so let's see how it works so we know that if you open the this data set you have up to 16 columns so only up to 15 column 
are the measurable quantities which are nothing but variables and column 16 is just uh, the category it's it provides some information about that the, the type of crystal so one means spherical and then if you go down two means needles and then if you go down three means agglomerated needles you yeah. so let's solve this one by one So let's we already loaded the data and then so we need to define what are the inputs and what are the outputs so input are just uh, let me put something so inputs get the measurable quantities in this case we have uh, 15 measurable quantities or 15 variables and then outputs or output is just the information that some information about the the crystal category yeah so obviously we don't need to know how, how many um, category exist in the actual data set but for this exercise um, we need this information because we have to supply some information to make something while we plot the results so for that we are going to specify what's the output or what are the outputs so output is uh, if you remember I said it's, it has some information like 1 comma 2 comma 3 so 1 means category 1 2 means category 2 3 means category 3 and then you have variables so how to do PCA so PCA the rules are simple so the rules of PCA or the algorithm all you need is to get the covariance matrix that's the first step if you don't know what's covariance matrix you have to watch my another video where I explain the mathematics of PCA and then followed by you have to calculate the eigenvalues of covariance matrix once you have the eigenvalues you have to rank the principal components oh sorry not the rank the principal components no, no, you have to rank the principal components, that's correct. Based on the eigenvalues. And once you rank the principal components, you calculate the corresponding eigenvectors. Eigenvectors of the eigenvalues. So you have to know how many number of eigenvalues or pieces principal components required to represent 95 percentage of the 95 percentage of the data yeah I mean the whole data set and based on that you have to calculate the number of pieces if you think three principal components are required to represent more than 95 percentage of the data then you have to calculate the first three principal components if you think two principal components is enough to represent 95 percentage of the data then you have to calculate two principal components which will be which will be principal component one and principal component two and you are going to follow this step using MATLAB so first we will calculate covariance matrix and then we will calculate eigenvalues of covariance matrix then we will rank the principal components and then we will calculate the eigenvectors of the eigenvalues and then we will calculate the principal components so let's do that so go back to MATLAB window which is here already 
So what I'm going to do is we already loaded the data. Just follow the arrow. Crystal data, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to rename it. I'm just going to call the data as data. 150 multiplied by 16. So in this first 15 columns belongs to input. So I'm going to write that as input okay so let's call x or let's call even input input is equal to data open bracket semicolon comma 1 2 15 hope i'm doing it correct Something is not correct. Yeah, so what we have here. So that's the command you need. One input is equal to data. 1 to 15. So let's put it here. What's this? So this command, it will go go and read the data, and then it, it will collect all the information starting from column one to fifteen, and we are going to call that column one to fifteen belongs to input, and then we have to define the output. Output will be the sixteenth column in the data set called data. Yes, yeah, so let's, let's go back to MATLAB. Output. These are just uh, crystal categories, data, and then open bracket, just column 16, that should be the output. Yeah. And then if you come to workspace, you will see you created already some data set called input, and the size is 150 multiplied by 15, and then you created something called output, and the size will be 150 multiplied by 1. So. It's your input, the dimension is 150 multiplied by 15. So if you create a covariance matrix, the size of the covariance matrix should be equal to 15 by 15. So it should be a square matrix, 15 by, and uh, the size of that covariance matrix should be equal to 15 multiplied by 15. So if you if you want to know why it's 15 by 15 then you have to watch my other video where I explain the, the mathematics of PCA. So normally if you have 15, 15 variables or 15 measurables you will get 15 ordered pairs. So, so sorry 15 raised to the power 2 that many number of ordered pairs in the covariance matrix. So let's calculate the, the covariance matrix. So I'm going to call covariance matrix using the symbol small s that will be equal to covariance of input. Yeah, it created. And if you come to workspace, you will see the size of the covariance matrix is 15 multiplied by 15. This is something that we can expect. So once you have the covariance matrix, all you need to do is uh, you have to get the how do you call it? the eigenvalues eigenvalue. So <coughs> I'm going to call um, maybe e e for eigenvalue e is equal to eigenvalue of the covariance matrix, which is just yes. So S is the covariance matrix of your input data. So E is the eigenvalue of that covariance matrix. So E is equal to eigenvalue of C. So you will get some column. So something that looks like here. So you'll get 15 multiplied by 1. So that's the dimension of you get. So this data already contains some, some interesting information. So what it have what it tells at least is the last value 2.5826 and then everything else is is zero. So 
so what it says is only one component is more than enough to represent almost a hundred percentage of the variance in the in the data set so that's what it it, it means this is something we can check we can do check using a staircase plot let's try to do that so what i'm going to do is you have this eigenvalues here i'm going to sort this eigenvalue in the in ascending order so which means the highest value will be on the top and the lowest value will be in the bottom so let's say z z is equal to sort sort the the data which is e comma and then i'm going to sort the values in the descending order sorry in descending order so which means highest value should be on the top and the lowest value should be in the bottom okay it's already sorted here if you see the value 2.58 to 6 on the top and then everything else is almost uh, zero so and then we can do something called z is equal to cumulative sum of this eigenvalue which is e uh, divided by sum of e so this should give some information uh, it should produce some number that range from 0 to 1 and it will also provide some information about um, how many number of principal components that we need to represent more than 95 percentage of the variance in the data let's check that okay we already arranged something from that range from 0 to 1 cumulative sum of uh, no i think i did a mistake this should be cumulative sum of z divided by cumulative sum of z so let's execute this still not correct now let's start from here z is equal to Sort E descend, that's correct, and then the next should be once you sort the eigenvalues in the descending order, then you take the cumulative sum of z divided by sum of z. That should give some information. Sum divided by sum of z sort descend now we have to plot staircase plot stars of z and this should create a window like that okay you have here so what we created is a staircase plot and you have something here like a one or two and then four something like five what it means is you have you need only one component to represent the 99.9 .9 percentage of the variance in the data set this is slightly surprising to me but let's assume that pc algorithm is correct and let's continue with the with the calculation i was expecting to to see like uh, we need at least three principal components to represent 99 percentage of the variance in the data but the matlab calculation shows only one component is enough to represent the 99 percentage of the variance in the data let's check that whether it's true or not i'm not sure So you have staircase plot 
and then now we need to calculate the eigenvalues and then the corresponding eigenvectors so we know that the s yes, is the covariance matrix so um so just follow the screen so s is the so s is the covariance matrix this is the covariance matrix and then we have to calculate the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix so how to how to do that it's simple so i'm going to call w w will be the eigenvector and then lambda that will be the eigenvalue so eigenvalue we already calculated but we will we have to calculate the corresponding eigenvector so the way to, to obtain that using matlab is this one w comma lambda that will be equal to eigenvalue of the covariance matrix which is yes that should calculate the eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors eigenvectors will be w eigenvalues will be lambda so let's check we already got some information here if we check w is 15 by 15 matrix that's something that you can expect because you have 15 measurable quantities you see column 1 to 13 and 14 15 is here that's the eigenvector w and then you have lambda which is here again 15 by 15 and then if you see here the diagonal that's the the diagonal uh, value should contain the eigenvalues you see 0 0 0 and then the 15th column you have something 2.5826 so which means your principal component is in the column 15 instead of column 1 and then the corresponding eigenvector should be here which is the column 15 in the matrix called w so this is an eigenvector w and this is eigenvalue lambda so we have to flip them flip them so that the eigenvalue with the highest eigenvalue that you see here that will become the first column or the first principal component and then the corresponding eigenvector should be placed in the first column in w so how to do that we have to flip w and flip lambda matrix which you have here and how The, the way to do is just w w is equal to w open bracket end oh sorry colon comma end colon minus one colon one close bracket so that should flip the w matrix and then you do the same for lambda again lambda that should flip the lambda matrix as well so once you flip it if we go back you see here the highest value so that's placed in column 1 and the lowest value in column 15 and the same way if you go to w which is eigenvectors the corresponding eigenvalues eigenvectors will be here in the first column so this should be the eigenvector that corresponds to the eigenvalue which is here to in the first column of lambda matrix so it's, we have only few more steps to obtain the principal component so one thing is clear is we need only one component one component to obtain the 99 percentage of the variance in data if you go to star case plot one more time so where is that star case plot mm -hmm. it's missing but so what it says is one component is enough to represent 99 percentage of the data and then the remaining if you add you may reach up to almost a hundred percentage of the data with the second component so let's calculate the first two principal component for the moment so how to get the two principal components so so 
since I said only two components are enough I'm going to even one component is enough but I'm going to calculate the first two principal component so to do that we need to get the first two eigenvectors here the eigenvector the first eigenvector that corresponds to eigenvalue 1 and then the eigenvector that corresponds to eigenvalue 2 which is here in the second column so let's create a new matrix that's called w underscore 2 and then we are going to pull only this first two columns from the w matrix so i'm going to call it w2 so we need this to get the first two principal component so let's we take only the f um so we read the matrix called w open bracket and then let's take the first uh, two columns so that should create a matrix of 15 multiplied by 2 you know, if you see here in workspace you see the size 15 multiplied by 2 so these are the first two columns from the eigenvector w underscore 2 so column 1 and column 2 so this is the eigenvector that corresponds to eigenvalue the first eigenvalue and then the, this is the eigenvector that corresponds to the second eigenvalue so we have some information here and then how to get the pcs to get pcs let's call it principal component or maybe just call pc p underscore c which means principal components that should be equal to we take the actual data set input multiplied by w underscore 2 so that should give your principal component so what we are doing now is um, show it is in your paint so what we are doing at the moment so we have a huge data set so like 150 rows and then you have another one like 15 columns and then you are transposing this whole data set or you are projecting this data set into just two principal components so you are going to transform all the information into two principal components and let's see to be honest the eigenvalues says even if you transform all this data 150 multiplied by 15 into one principal component that should be enough to represent 95 percentage of the 99 percentage of the variance in the data and which mean even one component can identify the existence of three categories in the given data set so you, you may get something like this category one category two category three not sure but we will check that right now with matlab so let's put this so what i'm doing is i take the whole data set the whole actual data set which is 150 multiplied by 15 this whole data set and then just multiplying with eigenvectors which is one leaf 150 multiplied by 2 so you have 150 rows column 1 150 rows column 2 so we're just multiplying this and if you multiply if you will you start with 150 multiplied by 15 multiplied by 150 multiplied by 2 so you will get a matrix of size 150 multiplied by 2 so that's first column will be your first principal component second column will be your second principal component so let's check whether this is correct or not yes once you multiply you get something like this so what you have here w not that one pcs so that's your first column that makes your first principal component then second column that makes the second principal component so if you check the size of pcs here in the workspace which is here 150 multiplied by 2 so that makes the 
two principal components okay so we can plot them we can plot both the components so plot um, plot open p underscore c then open bracket colon comma one comma p underscore pc sorry pc and then open bracket so we are plotting column one in the data set called pc versus column two in the same data set called pc comma i'm going to use some points of marker size of 100 against our output which we call it output comma field that marker will be filled uh -huh. some okay issue something is missing here the wrong command it should be scattered let's put a scatter plot mm -hmm. so this is plotting pc1 versus pc2 so one thing is clear you have one category here then you have category 2 but category 3 is also overlapping not a good result but anyway that's the that's how principal component analysis work something you reduce the dimension into just a two principal component 1 versus principal component 2 surprisingly this one match overlaps with crystal category 2 and crystal category 3 they overlap on each other and then your crystal category one stands separate so what it says is you have two different categories i'm going to generate three principal components it's not that difficult so to generate pc1 pc2 and pc3 you have to call the first three columns in the matrix which we call w let's pull three columns and then you get the new pcs pc1 pc2 and pc3 by taking your input multiplied by w underscore 3 okay and then we can do a 3d plot scatter 3 pc underscore p underscore c open column one and then you plot it against column th two and then column three 100 comma against output and some issue ok 
okay we plotted three principal components and still you see category one you have category two and category three they're overlapping on each other probably we have to do something with the data probably we can post pre-process the data or maybe we can remove some of the variables in the data and then we can try this exercise but I'm going to st stop now because I already showed how to obtain the the principal components and how to reduce the dimensions of the given data set using PCA maybe I will create one more video by slightly modifying the the data and then we can rework on the data again using PCA and then let's try to identify the three categories that exist in the given data set but for the moment for the data set of size 150 multiplied by 50 that's that makes our input after principal component analysis what we found is something like this that you see on the screen at the moment there are at, at least it shows two categories in the crystal set and then it it classifies the needle and the agglomerated needles into s almost like a same type of categories you know something similar so this graph helps to see the data at a different angle you know? so this is PC1 PC2 PC3 and you clearly see some separation here the blue one and then the yellow one and then the green one so it's it's not great but okay result so maybe I will create one more video with some new data or maybe I will use the same data but I will delete some of the variables if you go to actual data set let's go here you can open the actual data set If you go to this data set if you see few things they are repeating here one is uh, area this one and area and pixels they all they all are they both all represent the same variables but with different units so I can delete one of this column and then I can delete either I can use aspect ratio or elongation so elongation is one minus aspect ratio so I can use only one and uh, this is something I can remove this is not relevant for the type of problem that we are dealing with and then I can use the remaining variables and then we can reapply PCA and then let's check what happens after that probably that type of data should clearly identify the existence of two categories of crystals so and it's not surprising that PCA thinks PCA thinks these needles and then the agglomerated needles uh, where is that they are into a same category because they almost look same they have almost similar aspect ratio length to width you know, but but there is some way we can refine the the input data so that we can make the PCA to work correctly and then make it to identify the existence of three categories of crystals you know? so it also exposed the the disadvantages of the principal component analysis okay. so if you manage to do something here some pre-processing of the input or if you carefully select the variables uh, then we can make the PCA to work and we can use PCA to identify the existence of three categories but if you use all the variables which is shown here 15 variables then at least what we found is PCA may not be good to identify all the three categories but definitely it it separates perlites perlites from the other two categories needles and the agglomerated needles so that's all for the moment maybe in, in the next video I will try to do some pre-processing of the data the same data 
and then we can reapply PCA algorithm and let's see whether PCA can identify the existence of three categories in the data set. So thanks for listening.